More than 250,000 Brits live full-time in the Costa del Sol, making it the biggest expat community in the world. Among them, con men, small-time crooks, and some of the biggest British drug dealers and gangsters running their criminal empires. Hey, chef! Hey, hey! Keto, keto. Every summer, they're joined by more than half a million British tourists, hungry for the good life in the UK's number one holiday destination. And along with them comes an orgy of booze, dope, and violence. The man fucking hit me. Which raises the police workload by 300%. For more than 10 weeks, Costa del Street Crime had unlimited and unprecedented access to the police forces of the six biggest resorts as they fight the British summer crime wave. Coming up, a burning car leaves tourists running for their lives. No, I'm more worried about the people in these apartments. Yeah, I mean, I've got a friend in J9 and there's all this smoke going right into her apartment. Her boyfriend may have been battered, but there's no room in the ambulance for this oh, yes, drunken no, no. Brit. Back in England, that's your guy. You could go. And Costa cops crack down on teenage pranksters. They cannot joke with the police. They know. Ben Almadena. Every summer, the population of the resort, 15 miles west of Malaga, rises from a sleepy 40,000 to a banging 400,000. But if that's not enough, on weekends, 1,100 licensed premises attract thousands more young punters from all over the Costa del Sol, many of them Brits. But with booze on the Costa a fraction of the price in the UK, many Brits end up drinking far more than they can handle. Many fall victim to horrific crimes. They fucking stab me, fucking scumbags. It's only 10 p.m. and officers have had a report of a violent brawl in a bar popular with Brits. There's been a fight and someone has been injured. One man is unconscious and is bleeding from the head. It sounds very serious, so we have called an ambulance. On scene, and the police have already started the process of clearing out the bar. The British victim has been semi-conscious for the past 10 minutes but still can't move. The medics are treating his condition with extreme caution, as signs indicate this could be a critical injury. Surprisingly, the man's partner is also forced to step outside. And this doesn't go down too well. Oh, he's my boyfriend! He's my boyfriend! Yeah, but you can go with him. We can help him. Unlike in the UK, in Spain, the patient's needs are the medic's only priority. As well as being unhappy about being separated from her partner, the woman's also concerned about why her boyfriend was attacked. He just hit him. For no reason. For no reason. Uh, well, I don't know what reason. He hit him. But well, I know one guy who was with him. It was an English And he's guy. like, Tracy, Tracy, leave it out, leave it out. I'm like, no, why is he doing this to him? With drunk Brits involved in fights nearly every night of the week in Ben Almadena, this is an all too familiar scene for Officer Parejo. Someone hit him, right? A punch in, on, on his face, and uh, the man go down. Not only is the man bleeding from his nose, but the medics are also concerned that he suffered a neck injury during his fall. They take no risks. He's put into a neck brace and immediately taken to hospital for a check. His girlfriend is furious because she's not allowed to go with him. Look, right, one thing, right, we're, in, we're here in Spain now. Back in England, that's your guy. You could go. Agree with me? Yeah, agree, you could go. Here, now they're saying, no, I cannot go with him. Because of Spain's strict medical guidelines, the angry Brit is forced to make her own way to the hospital. He wa she wants to uh, go with him in, into the ambulance, but uh, on the, the, the paramedic routes uh, say can cannot go. You know? Have to take a taxi to go with them because have to 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 walk inside. Three people working inside the ambulance. That's all. A check at the hospital revealed the man had not suffered any neck injuries, but had a broken nose. After receiving treatment, he was released the same night from A and E. His attackers were never caught. It's now 4 a.m. 
And with the Brit bars emptying out, officers Pinardo and Hermida have received a call from a residential area populated by a mixture of expats and Spanish. A burning car outside a block of flats is reported to have trapped several ground floor residents inside. There's a car on fire and it could turn into a big place. Hopefully the firefighters will arrive before us. There are reports of trapped children and as the fire engine hasn't arrived yet, the cops are desperate to get there fast. In situations like these, every second counts. With the early morning roads clear, the cops have made good time. But once on scene, they see the situation is way out of control. The burning car is just feet away from the apartments, with flames stopping anyone from getting near. But most worryingly, there's no sign of the fire engine. Por favor, abran la puerta. Abran la puerta para que pasen los bomberos. Se lo más urgente posible. It's not just the 10-foot flames that pose a danger to the trapped families. A burning car can produce deadly toxic gases and send exploding shreds of debris flying through the air. This is definitely a job for firefighters. But as they are not on scene yet, there's little the cops can do without putting their own lives at great risk. The car is burning too close to those apartments and the fire could easily spread. The people inside are probably asleep and will have to wait for the firemen. But some residents are awake now and they're very concerned that things are getting out of hand. No, I'm more worried about the people in these apartments. Yeah, I mean, I've got a friend in J9 and there's all this smoke going right into her apartment. It's now 15 minutes since the police arrived and still no sign of the fire engine. Although Ben Almadena fire services try to attend any fire within minutes, during the high season there's a dramatic increase in emergency calls, so they're constantly stretched to their limit. With the flames spreading to another car, one of the trapped residents is feeling the heat and won't risk waiting any longer. <laughs> With temperatures from the car exceeding 800 degrees Celsius, three times that of a hot oven, this terrified woman risks everything, forcing Officer Pinardo into compromising his safety. But as he helps the woman escape, the desperate screams of children have led his partner to take an even bigger risk. Officer Hermeda has somehow managed to rescue this child from the apartment directly opposite this burning car. But his brave work isn't over just yet. With one child safe, he's straight back in to rescue the rest of her family. The windows of the car explode, spraying glass everywhere. With the help of the officers, the girl's sister and father have made it out alive. With all residents in immediate danger safely accounted for, the fire has now completely engulfed the second car. The blaze has doubled in size compared to when the officers first arrived on scene. They now fear the flames could cause some real damage. With still no sign of the fire engine, the cops resort to desperate but very limited measures. As the officers realize they're fighting a losing battle, the fire engine finally turns up. It's taken half an hour. The firefighters immediately start extinguishing the blaze, but if it wasn't for the brave efforts of officers Pinardo and Hermeda, the outcome could have been far worse. In the spare of the moment, you just think about other people's safety, not your own. After handing over to the firemen, the cops can now turn their attention to how the fire started. The owner of the burning car says her ex-lover recently threatened to set fire to it. She's pretty sure that he is responsible. But it seems that not everyone agrees with the woman's allegations. No, I, I, I don't think it was deliberate because the fire started underneath the bonnet, like it was the... Um, Short circuit in the wiring or something. I know, something, yeah, something happened in the, uh, in the engine. I don't think it was deliberate. After a thorough investigation, officers found no evidence to link the woman's ex-boyfriend to the fire. 
and he was later cleared of all allegations made against him. Still to come, a drug dealer overdoses on his own stash and a dodgy driver leaves the cops for dust. The Costa del Sol is not only home to the biggest British expat community in the world, but with more than half a million tourists every summer, it's also the UK's number one holiday destination. With Brits packing the beaches and flooding the resort, the police workload explodes by 300%. Costa del Street Crime had unlimited and unprecedented access to the police forces of the six biggest resorts. It is right at the forefront of their battle against the British summer crime wave. Coming up, this dopey drug dealer samples more than he sells. And it's the end of the road for these armed teenagers. They cannot joke with the police. They know. Torre Molinos, 11 p.m. Police have just mounted a checkpoint on the busiest roundabout en route to Ben Almadena in search of weapons and drugs. And it isn't long before a real but rather unusual weapon is discovered. It's a fishing harpoon. In Spain, you need a license to carry a hunting weapon. And as the man can't produce one, the harpoon is confiscated. As the weapon's secured, officers nearby have pulled over a middle-aged Scandinavian woman with three young male passengers. Hola, buenas noches. ¿De dónde son ustedes? Todos. Un momentito, eh? The men claim to be locals, but with tens of thousands of illegal immigrants making the nine-mile boat crossing from Africa to Spain every year, police are forced to be extra cautious. Hola, buenas noches. Hola, buenas noches. One of the men has failed to produce his ID, the law in Spain. But it seems that his limited understanding of Spanish lingo is about to give the cops even more reason to be suspicious. <laughs> But just as the man's being led away to establish his true identity, police at the other checkpoint are suddenly caught off guard as a silver Renault approaches the roadblock. The youths in the car have made a getaway. For situations like this, police have a response car ready to give chase. Because they're so busy, the car has been left unmanned. The Renault has been given a 20-second head start, and it's now unlikely the cops will catch up with the youths. Back at the station, it turned out that the man, not from Senegal, had a permit to stay in Spain, but the three youths in the silver Renault were never traced. Midnight. Three miles away in Ben Almadena, officers Benasco, Juanito and Parejo are on patrol when they suddenly spot something suspicious in a passing car. Sergeant Benasco thinks he spotted a gun and they immediately give chase. Gun crime here is reported to be a big problem. Some experts estimate that 90% of Costa criminals carry guns. So it's no surprise when Juanito recognizes the driver from an incident the previous weekend. As the cops approach the men inside, they cautiously cover all angles. Fingers on triggers, prepared for a shootout. With the driver and passenger seemingly surprised by the heavy-handedness, it looks like Officer Juanito has already found the weapon in question, which for some reason he's very eager to conceal from view. Convinced there may be more, Benasco and Parejo carry out a thorough search, which also proves fruitful. Okay. 
más fumas, ¿sabes? Sí, la guantera la tiene... En el seicero tiene colilla de corrida. With drugs and weapons discovered, Officer Juanito finally agrees to reveal the other confiscated items, one of which is a lot less lethal than first suspected. The, the boss uh, saw something strange, and we have just stole the car and checking the car, and we have to find this. A little knife that is forbidden. It's forbidden. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a gun. I don't know if real or not, but I thought that the same uh, uh, similar uh, shape, shape yeah, than the gun. Then we uh, went back to get them, and now we can see that it's uh, a toy gun. But we know them before, because uh, this weekend, last weekend, uh, we arrest one of them, because he was uh, ro uh, robbing him inside the car. Do you think they were going to use a plastic bomb? No, no, no. It's only joking. But they cannot joke with the police. They know. Over the last years, many robbers have started using replica guns because the Spanish courts tend to be more lenient on them than if they were caught with real ones. The driver later received a fine for the possession of cannabis, but there was no charge for carrying the multicolored gun. Still in Ben Almadena, it's now 2 a.m. Officers Penerdo and Narve have just received an urgent call about a man collapsed next to a hot dog stand in the town centre. The control room says that someone's had an epileptic fit in Solimar Square. On scene, the officers are quick to locate the man who's still in a state of severe spasm. The paramedics haven't arrived yet. So with only limited first aid skills, Officer Penerdo and his men have to tend to the man themselves. With the man not responding, there's nothing much Penerdo can do. But despite the obvious severity of the situation, the hot dog customers don't seem that concerned. No, I don't know she what happened. Walked. I just finished work. She did it. <laughs> she did it. Oh, take her. She did it. It's going to be on TV. <laughs> Finally, the medics arrive and the police hand over. The medics aren't sure what's wrong, so with the help of the cops, he's moved into the ambulance. <laughs> But while the man's medical condition appears to have improved, it seems his general situation has taken a turn for the worse. After going through the man's carrier bag, the cops find something that may explain his condition. There's a huge amount of pills in here, around 70 or 80. That's far too much for personal consumption, so it looks like he's a dealer. The man may be on his way to hospital, but he won't be leaving without seeing the cops again. Did you notice there is a large sum of money too? Probably from selling drugs. Drug dealing is taken very seriously in Spain. And if he can't explain it, we're talking about a heavy sentence, several years in prison. After a night in hospital, the man made a full recovery, but investigations into the case are still ongoing. Just three miles west of Ben Almadena, in the cheap package resort of Fuengirola, it's now 4 a.m. Officers Manuel Duque and Juan Canas are responding to reports of a disturbance in a residential area. And on the street, it's fairly easy to locate the trouble. As someone screaming obscenities in Arabic. <laughs> From the limited amount of Arabic Officer Duque understands, it appears that the man on the floor has fallen out with his flatmate's girlfriend and is refusing to get in the car with them. <laughs> Unlike the UK, in Spain, you have to carry ID on you at all times. 
Despite the police presence, this threesome gone wrong continues to bicker. But the cops aren't interested in their drunken dispute. They still haven't seen this man's papers. As the man now accuses his friend of attacking him, the cops lose patience. With the man's ID snatched from his hands, he continues to point the finger at his friend. After a warning slap, the man eventually calms down and tries to explain his side of the story. With the man making no sense at all, Officer Duque speaks with the only witness, his friend's girlfriend. Unsurprisingly, she isn't backing him up. With no evidence to support his accusations, the cops decide to send the warring threesome on their way. This time, the couple don't hang around, leaving their flatmate to make his own way home. No problem. No problem. Left on his own, it looks like the man thinks he's made a new best friend. But like before, his friendship's about to be brought to a sudden end. And it's easy to see why his popularity runs thin. Merda!